Hello and welcome back to California Geology. Today I want to introduce the, um, the coast ranges and uh, in here in California and also the selenium block. So in the coast ranges they extend basically from the from the Oregon border down to the transverse ranges down in Southern California. They're over a thousand kilometers long about 135 kilometers wide um, and most of the range the eastern border would be the the the, the um, Central Valley or the Great Valley uh, province but up in the northern part uh, of the range of the coast ranges it, it, it's the Klamath Mountains that would be on the on the eastern side but one thing that the coast ranges share in common with the uh, Sierra Nevada is that they're both young geologic features both uplifted in the last five million years in fact some of the coast range rocks are as young as um, 3.5 million years old, so relatively young rock formations now exposed above sea level, and these were once marine deposits. Uh, as an example, during the 1989 Loma Prieta earthquake, the Santa Cruz Mountains west of the San Andreas Fault uh, were uplifted by um, a little over three feet, right? So 1.2 meters. So again, showing that the mountains are still presently being pushed up. And we'll talk about what type of a movement occurs on the San Andreas Fault to enable that type of uplift. Um, the oldest rocks in the coast ranges are, are Mesozoic, maybe some Paleozoic ones, um, and the single most widespread unit is the Franciscan Formation or the Assemblage. It's, it goes by various names, Assemblage, Complex, but it's all really a, a, an accretionary wedge subduction zone complex that we'll talk about here. Uh, your book mentions that there's some maybe some Precambrian rocks up in the Mount Pinos area, uh, down in, in the southern coast ranges. In fact, that's kind of bordering right along with the transverse ranges where there are some Precambrian rocks exposed down in there. So we'll look at those um, probably in more detail when we do the transverse ranges. Now before we start talking about the Franciscan Formation, I want to outline six main rock units exposed in the coast ranges. Maybe seven. We'll, we'll see about the seven with one here. But the Franciscan Formation is, a, in fact, your book calls it the heart of the coast ranges. It's a Mesozoic subduction zone complex. Uh, uh, and remember, it would be a subduction zone counterpart to the Sierra Nevada Bathyst. So in other words, in the coast ranges, you were having the accretionary wedge, the melange, subduction zone complex. And then uh, farther inland, you're having the Sierra Nevada arc, magmatic arc. So it's related. And in fact, they're... They're coeval. They both formed at the same time. You need one to have the other, right? And then uh, the second group in the coast ranges is uh, the Sur series, named after Big Sur. And the Sur series are mostly um, metamorphic roof pendants, uh, all uh, uh, metamorphosed by intrusion of this third group, which are these uh, plutonic rocks, Mesozoic granitic rocks, mostly um, uh, uh, Cretaceous in age. Again, very similar to the Sierra Nevada baffleth. In fact, these selenium block um, granites uh, and the overlying roof pendants represent the core of this selenium block. And we'll talk about this selenium block. It's an, it's an unusual series of rocks exposed in the coast ranges. Remember, the coast ranges should be subduction zone material. But yet, these two together represent a magmatic arc like the Sierra Nevada. So how can the Sierra Nevada be in the coast ranges. So it has to deal with the San Andreas Fault moving these materials from Southern California up here into coastal California. Now um, the fourth group are the Cenozoic volcanic rocks. So the pinnacles, there's another series of volcanic rocks near Hollister called the Quien Sabe Volcanics. They're the ones that you go over Pacheco Pass there on 152. Also the San, Lu San Luis Obispo Volcanics, a uh, 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 moral rock, one of those, that, that's also one of these Cenozoic volcanic rocks. If you go up to Sonoma, there's a Sonoma volcanic field, and also the Clear Lake volcanics are related to this uh, Cenozoic volcanic field. And then uh, the next unit are these um, Cenozoic marine sediments. They include sandstones and shales. If you hike around the Santa Cruz Mountains, you'll see the, the Vaquero sandstones, the Butano sandstones, a bunch of shales up there all related to um, uh, kind of submarine canyon deposits when this area was underwater. Uh, another famous formation uh, is the Monterey Formation. We've talked a little bit about that in that it's an oil producer here in California. 
And then the sixth unit is the Great Valley Secrets. And these are Mesozoic sediments. And so remember, if you have the, the, the subduction zone material and you have the, the, the magmatic arc in the Sierra Nevada, the basin that occurs between the arc and the subduction zone, the trench, should be the, the, the arc trench gap sediments or the four arc basin. Now, um, here I put a seventh unit, the Crow. Crow stands for Coast Range Ophiolite. And so there is some ophiolite exposed only on the east side of the coast ranges. And, um, but ophiolite, it underlies the central valley. So we might leave it uh, for our discussion of the central valley. But it is a unit that's exposed here in the coast ranges. In fact, there's ophiolite exposed in, um, in Alum Rock Park here in San Jose. All right, so now uh, let's look in more carefully at these Franciscan rocks. So where are they exposed? In fact, you can break the Franciscan rocks into into two belts. Uh, one belt is this, this eastern belt here. Here it says eastern belt. And note that the eastern belt occurs east of the San Andreas Fault. So the, the eastern belt is east. And I'll put SAF for San Andreas Fault, east of the San Andreas Fault. Note that there's another belt over here called the, the western Franciscan block. So the western belt is exposed uh, west of the, in fact, the, the fault is, we'll put west of Sur Nascimento Fault. So that's another, that's another fault. That's a Sur, well, you can see right here, Sur Nascimento Fault right here. And that Sur Nascimento Fault, um, it occurs basically on the west side of the Santa Lucia range. So we'll say west side of Santa Lucia range. And the Santa Lucia range is a major mountain belt in the Big Sur region. It's a, it's a spine of Big Sur, the big high peaks in that region there. So those are the two belts of the Franciscan. One exposed uh, on the east, one on the west, and sandwiched in between is a selenium block. So again, this block uh, probably started down here in Southern California and was moved northward by movement on the San Andreas Fault. And so recall that uh, the Pacific Plate is primarily moving toward the northwest, and then the North America Plate is sliding sort of toward the southeast. So this, this motion is allowing these material from Southern California to move northward into their current position. And we'll, see, we'll look at some evidence for that as well. If we think about what Mesozoic California was like, remember we had a subduction zone complex, uh, at, and another thing we should probably point out here is that during this time, remember uh, offshore, there was an oceanic ridge, right? So a mid-oceanic ridge where there's seafloor spreading going on over here. So this would be oceanic crust. And so what I want you to know here during this Mesozoic time is this is the East Pacific Rise. East Pacific Rise. So it's that mid-oceanic ridge. It's still off shore um, South America and it kind of is offshore um, uh, central Mexico but it goes into the Gulf of California it turns into the San Andreas Fault today. And the other thing to note, out, note is that there's C4 spreading going here. This plate's going back this way. This plate's going this way. So the plate that's that's over here on the west side of the East Pacific Rise, this here is called the, the, the Pacific Plate. So the Pacific Plate, note that during Mesozoic time, it's not even touching California. It's not in contact with California. The name of the plate that was being subducted during, during this time, this plate here, where it says Oceanic Crest, this is actually called the Farallon Plate, named after the Farallon Islands. And so this Farallon Plate was being subducted during this time, uh, resulting in, in uh, partial melting here of the peridotite, that hydrous flux melting, producing the batholith under the Sierra Nevada. So here would be the Sierra Batholith over here. So here, so here we're seeing the, the Sierra Batholith, the Sierra Arc Volcanoes, uh, the Great Valley Sequence, that's at Art Trench Gap, the Franciscan Subduction Zone Complex, and also note that under the, um, the, 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 the Central Valley here, this is oceanic crust. And some of that is exposed up here along the east side of the coast ranges. One place to see them, like I said, is Alum Rock Park. You can also find it at, at Mount Diablo. So this would be that coast 
range ophiolite, coast range ophiolite. Um, and, uh, and really it's part of that Smartville complex because you find all those, those, those Smartville complex rocks exposed down here in the foothills terrain as well. Uh, all the accreted terrains that accreted during um, Paleozoic and Mesozoic time. All right, so here's our, oh, here, it does say Farallon plate right here. So here's a Farallon plate subducting. Pacific plate is over here. It's not in contact. Later on, when we develop San Andreas Fault, we're going to have to change this whole thing and make it into a transform margin. So let's look at more detail like this Franciscan rock. So the Franciscan rocks, so what are they? They're primarily, really, you can, you can really break them out into two, two groups. There's these marine sediments. That would be number one. And the other group are these um, fragments of, of ocean lithosphere, upper mantle, right? Fragments of oceanic crust and upper mantle. And collectively, they're really oceanic crust. It's a, the crustal rock, which includes the pillow lavas, basalts, gabbros, and then the upper mantle, which is the, 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 the serpentinites. Yeah, here's serpentinites. Remember, the protolith of serpentinite is peridotite. So it represents mantle rock, and it really represents part of that ophiolite sequence. So fragments of oceanic crust being scraped off, attached, colliding with uh, with North America, with California during this time. So let's say a little bit about these uh, this first group, which are the the marine sedimentary rocks. So they're forming in submarine sand deposits, sort of like um like the Monterey Canyon. You get the submarine canyons. Sediments going down there and making deposits in the deep waters there. And so you get the turbidites. Remember the turbidites are the graded beds. They're coarse to find. The gray wicky sandstone, the shale mudstone deposits, some marine chert deposits, and limestone. So sandstone, shale, well, those are the, the, the submarine deposits. And then the gray wacky sandstones that we see, uh, they're called dirty because they're, they have a variety of of lithic fragments, right? So lithics are, are just rock, maybe volcanic rock fragments, uh, darker rock fragments. There's shale pieces mixed in it. There's marine chert mixed in it. There's, there's some quartz on felspar, but really there's a combination of others. So it's really, this material is, is said to be immature, right? It's an immature sandstone. It, it, it has a nearby source. It hasn't been chemically weathered. Now, um, for the limestones, Limestones are, are, in fact, we find some foraminifer ooze, uh, usually associated with basaltic lava, suggesting an oceanic volcanic plateau or a seamount accretion. So what that means is that in the ocean, um, remember, ooze really can't, this, this foraminifer ooze really cannot form in an ocean deeper than 4,500 meters because it starts to dissolve because there's more carbonic acid down there. But if there are oceanic plateaus or seamounts, the ooze can form on, on them. And so as these seamounts uh, become a, go into the ocean trench in the subduction zone and, and become accreted, instead of being subducted, some of them get scraped off. In fact, um, uh, a good place to see uh, an example of some, of some limestones over some ocean basalts is right at Rockaway Beach near Pacifica. Uh, that's a good place where there's uh, material there. Another place where there's quite a bit of limestone uh, is a permanent quarry right here in Saratoga in, in, in um, Stevens Creek Reservoir right up there. That's they're, they're mining out some of the limestone associated with this Franciscan formation. One thing about limestone, it's, it's unusual. It's not very common in California. Here we have a lot of volcanic rocks, plutonic rocks, metamorphic rocks, and this accretionary wedge rock. Uh, limestone is more common in the East Coast, Mississippi, Pennsylvania, not so common here. And so uh, when we have it, it's, it's, it's a resource because it's used for making lime. And lime is um, used in cement, uh, calcium oxide. So anyhow, that's uh, the limestone. Now the Franciscan chert is a siliceous ooze composed of these radial areas, which are similar to the foraminifera, these protozoans. They make a glass or silica shell, uh, uh, quartz essentially. And they're Jurassic in age. And they like living in equatorial waters, and they'll sink to the seafloor in the deep ocean there. Um, when looking at the marine sedimentary rocks, we, we can make two important conclusions. One is that the Franciscan assemblage is a number of separate blocks of oceanic plate, right? There's limestone, there's chert, there's pillow lava. The other one is that some of these blocks formed near the equator, so they're far traveled. Again, that's based on the chert 
and also to some degree the limestone. Mm -hmm.